Well, good morning. We continue to be worshiping online, uh, the five United Methodist Churches of Billings doing it together. It's been a great time to show how wonderful it is to have colleagues in ministry and to be able to worship as a group. We hope soon this will be a chance also not only to worship online, but there'll be a chance to, to come back and, and worship in person. We don't know when that'll happen. It all depends on the medical issues that might come up. You know, I saw a cartoon the other day. Uh, a woman's walking down the aisle of the church with a cup of coffee in her pajamas um, with bunny slippers on. And the caption underneath as people look at her saying, Norma's been doing online worship too long. <laughs> well, you know, that's the wonderful thing about online worship. You don't have to go in your car anywhere. You can be in your home. You can be comfortable. You know, if, if you need to get a cup of coffee or tea, as in my case, uh, you go get it and you don't miss anything. So it, it's an important time. Now, we are only online right now, but the church continues to be in ministry. Uh, this last week, I was reminded of that on Sunday afternoon. Uh, we had a car parade for Alice Lyon's 90th birthday. I tell you, it was great. We had two fire engines leading it, and I don't know, I didn't count them, but there were at least 60, maybe 80 cars all with signs, and we all drove by Alice as she stood on the curb with her walker and waved to everyone. Of course, after that, Alice went out and rode horseback on her 90th birthday. That was what she wanted to do most. You know, we can continue to be together as a church community, which is important. And we celebrate that community through communion. Now, to be honest, we all missed our calendars. We've got all this online stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of hazy as to when we're, where we are. We missed last week as the first Sunday of the month. So we're going to do communion this Sunday. So if you'll get uh, your elements ready, we'll have a communion later on in the worship service. Don't forget to pray and to text your prayers that you would like shared. The number is on your screen, so if you will do those texts of prayers of concern and of thanksgiving, because there are both during this difficult time. And finally, we'd like you to virtually check in. You know, we, we kind of wonder who all those people are watching. Uh, the numbers have been interesting. Uh, during the actual live service, uh, we've been running 140 to 160 or so. But when you look at people who have signed in later and looked at it later, uh, the numbers have been 700s, 800s. So we're reaching a lot of people. And I hope in reaching you, you find this time of worship helpful to your spiritual journey as we move forward in hope. Because there will be a time when we will be together face to face. But even then, it will be different. We don't know what those differences will be, but I hope this time has helped us develop a larger sense of community, of being there for one another. Let us pray. Oh God, we come this morning to worship you. And as we worship, help us to open our hearts and our minds to new ideas, to new people whom we can reach out and help. We thank you for the ways in which you have provided for us so well. And we ask that you help us to recognize where others are in need and allow us to provide those needs. It isn't the same. 
as we worship electronically together, but don't get to see our friends and neighbors face to face. But we know that whenever two of us or more are gathered, you are amongst us. And on this day, with everybody gathered together electronically, your presence is here. Help us sense that presence and be thankful for it. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. seem like you're upset right now. Hold on, I can't understand a thing you're saying. You gave me this really fancy though T-Rex translator the other day. Let me just turn it on here so I can understand what you're saying. Oh. So you made a mistake because you didn't listen to your mom when she gave you an instruction and you're having trouble learning? You know, I don't think that's anything new, Rex. I think maybe we can figure out how to make that better. Do you want to you try with me a little bit? Uh -huh. Yeah, let's, let's talk about it. You know, sometimes we struggle in life and we struggle to understand how to do certain things there's actually a really helpful part of our faith that we use to listen to stories about different people's struggles and what they've faced. Have you ever heard of the Bible, Rex? Huh? Yeah. Do you know why we read the Bible? <laughs> no, Rex, it's not to get exactly what we should do in life. In fact, many of the things in here we won't ever get to do. You know what this is for? It helps us understand the struggles of other people who've gone ahead in the faith before us, who've lived through things that are challenging and hard. In fact, today, Pastor Angie's going to tell us some more about a woman named Sarah. And Sarah uh, encountered God and heard a message about something new that was going to come into her life. She was going to be a mom. But she didn't believe it. And so she laughed at the idea. You know what's funny? Sometimes, just like Sarah, we can't believe what our parents or, um, you know, Jesus referred to God as a mother or a father figure to us. She couldn't even believe and trust what God was telling her. Do you have sometimes trouble trusting what your mom is trying to help you understand? Yeah, it can be hard. Does your mom love you? Yeah, she does. So here's what I want you to imagine. Just like Sarah who giggled a little bit. I want you to, you know, sometimes it'll seem a little weird what your parents ask you, but listening to your parents is really important. And as you get older, I invite you to keep reading stories about people who went before and how they struggled in life too. Because when you read the stories and you understand the struggles other people have, you can see where God is calling us in the next step. And in your case right now, where your parents are trying to help you grow. You want to pray with me? Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we are so thankful for you. Our Heavenly Mother, be with us as we continue to learn, as we continue to listen, and as we continue to grow. Amen. Bye, Rex. Have a good day, and say Happy Mother's Day to your mom. It'll help out.
Our scripture today comes from Genesis 18, 1 through 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent. In the heat of the day, Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat, so you can be refreshed and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seas of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. And then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked. There in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already old and well advanced in years, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out and my master is old, and I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have, page turn, will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. This is the word of God for the people of God. People of God have always recorded stories about how they lived out their faith in the unique times and circumstances in which they found themselves. We too are living in unique times. Scripture reminds us that faith forms the foundation for a life worth living in any and every circumstance. It tells us that acts of faith are what distinguished our ancestors setting them above the crowd. Noah, Abraham, Sarah, and Moses. By faith, each of these ancestors did things that were not humanly possible. And God's plan was that their faith and our faith would come together to make the faith complete. So we ask ourselves, who are the saints whose lives have inspired and influenced us How do their stories help complete our own stories? And if we were to open a time capsule from their time on earth, what might we find? Because scripture also tells us this, all these leaders, all those who blaze the way and cheer us on, it means we'd better get on with it, start running and never quit. So let's ask ourselves, how are we being called to live out our history with faith? Where, in this time and space, do we find evidence of our living God? What will we put in our own time capsule? The journey may not be our choosing, but we believe God is with us. This morning, we continue in our series, Living History, Living God. 
where we unlock stories of faith from our ancestors and apply that wisdom to our own faith journeys today. Two weeks ago, Pastor Mike shared with us the story of the road to Emmaus and how faith means opening our eyes to what God is doing in and around us. Last week, Pastor Wendy shared with us the story of the Good Shepherd and how faith is less of a feeling and more of an action. This morning, in honor of Mother's Day, we are going to celebrate the faith of the first matriarch in the Bible, Sarah. Sarah was the mother of the Jewish nation. But you see, I think it's safe to say that if Mother's Day was a thing back then, Sarah would have hated it, dreaded it. Because Sarah's journey to motherhood was not an easy one. It was filled with lots of obstacles and lots of waiting. And how waiting comes into play in our own faith journeys is what we are going to be talking about this morning. Who here worshiping with us this morning loves to wait? My guess is no one has their hands raised at home. I certainly don't like waiting and I am not very good at it. So whether I am waiting on something important or I'm just late waiting in line at the grocery store, it's hard for me. And waiting to be a mother has got to be one of the most difficult trials any women can endure. Sarah was a woman of faith, but she had to wait a long time for God to fulfill the promise of motherhood. She acted in faith and left her home, the Ur of the Chaldees, and journeyed with her husband Abraham all the way to the promised land. God had made a covenant with them. Sarah didn't have all the answers at the time. She didn't know how things were going to work out, but she trusted God and stepped out in faith. And we see in chapter 15 of Genesis that God describes the blessings that would be bestowed upon Abraham and therefore Sarah, explaining that Abraham would be the father of many nations and that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. So that sounds great, right? What's the problem? Well, if you remember what Pastor Tyler just read in scripture, we will know that not only was Sarah elderly at this point, just like her husband Abraham, but she was also barren. They had no children. And so I'm sure that time and time again, when God would speak to Abraham and say, this is the covenant that I'm making with you, there was that thought of, well, that's all well and good, but how is this gonna happen, God, if Sarah can't have children, right? The problem with resting on the promises of God, loved ones, is that we always have to wait. God hardly ever acts as quickly as we hope or pray for, right? That's just the reality of it. And waiting with faith means praying for God's will to be done, not our own will to be done. And man, is that hard. So. After decades of waiting to be a mother, Sarah does something that all of us are guilty of doing. She decides to take matters into her own hands. At this point of the story, Sarah was about 75 and still not pregnant. Every month where there was no promised baby, she and Abraham grew more and more desperate. Their fear became greater than their faith. And what happens when we act out of fear and desperation? Nothing good, absolutely nothing good. So Sarah goes to Abraham and says, take my maidservant Hagar and you can have a child and a son through her. And so Abraham went and slept with Hagar and she gave birth to a son and named him Ishmael. And it was nothing but grief and brokenness because it was not God's plan. It was Sarah and Abraham acting out of desperation. 
And so this mess followed. As soon as Sarah found out that Hagar was pregnant, she began to despise her. Can you blame her? And she got more angry and lashed out more, and there was division between her and Hagar and Ishmael and Abraham. It was a mess. How many times have we fallen into that temptation to try to play God, take matters into our own hands, just like Sarah, only to be filled with bitterness and heartache when we realize that it wasn't what God had intended for us? And now we get to chapter 18 of Genesis, our scripture passage, where the three visitors, or what I believe to be is the Trinity, appear to Abraham. And just like good, you know, ancient Middle Eastern folks, Abraham runs into the tent and says, Sarah, make some bread for scratch for these visitors. So Sarah's in the tent, filled with all that anger and resentment that you could imagine that's been built up for decades of no child, no heir, no fulfilled promise, when she overhears one of the visitors, the Lord, say, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. So she overhears this, and she laughs. This is the original LOL, laugh out loud scenario, okay? Have you ever heard something that is so seemingly ridiculous, so outlandish, that you just have to stop and laugh? If somebody had told me that my first year as a senior pastor, I would endure a global pandemic with murder hornets flying around, I would have laughed absolutely out loud. Sarah had faced obstacle after obstacle when it came to her journey of faith. She wanted to be a mother more than anything, but each year it got harder and harder to believe that God was going to keep that promise, that she would produce an heir. Because it wasn't happening in her timeline. It wasn't unfolding in the way that she wanted it to. And that pressure, that pressure to produce, that pressure to make things happen, was just sending her to the breaking point, and she was done. Here's the truth. Many pastors and biblical commentators shame Sarah for laughing, for her seeming lack of doubt, but I'm not going to do that. I don't blame her at all. In fact, it encourages me to know that she struggled, because that is something that I can relate to. That is something that inspires me to know that I'm not alone, Our ancestors of faith were just imperfect people trying to follow a perfect God. And I don't know about you, but I am familiar with that. So if you are here with us this morning, and you are just exhausted with waiting, with something to be fulfilled in your faith journey, know that you are in good company. We are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses that are saints, flawed with mistakes and failures, just like us, that can not only relate to us, but they can empathize with what we are going through and cheer us on. The passage in Genesis 18 ends with God responding to Abraham and asking, is there anything too impossible for God? I will return this time next year and Sarah will have a son. This is the first time in the scriptures that we hear this phrase, and we know that Jesus utters those words again in the Gospels. Is anything too impossible for God? And just as promised, the Lord was gracious to Sarah and gave her a miraculous birth to her son Isaac at the age of 90. And Isaac's name is appropriately meaning laughter. It is important to note that Sarah wasn't the only matriarch of faith that was barren. Sarah's son, Isaac, grew up and married the lovely Rebecca, who was also barren. Through 20 years of marriage, they had no children, and they waited and waited upon the Lord until finally 
Rebekah gives birth to her two sons, Esau and Jacob. And then Jacob grows up and falls in love with the lovely Rachel, who is also barren. But don't worry, her sister Leah, she isn't as loved, but she can have children, which was a whole other mess. You see, our ancestors are just as messy as we are. A Rachel's womb is finally opened, and she is able to conceive a son after years of waiting who is named Joseph, who later serves and saves his brothers from famine. So why did the writers of Genesis believe it was important to note the barrenness of the matriarchs of faith? Why is that particular biblical theme important? Well, professor and author Marcus Borg tells us that by narrating these stories of the threats of the promise of God, they intensify the theme of the promise and fulfillment. The story of Israel gives us this truth today, that even when things look hopeless, when birth and new life seem impossible, when it seems as if there is no hope and we feel like God's promises are pipe dreams, God still finds a way to come through. And loved ones, the promises of God are still as real for us today as they were back then. So my question for all of us this morning is, what are we waiting on the Lord to fulfill? What promises are we anticipating this morning? Maybe this Mother's Day you are waiting for reconciliation with an estranged child. You are praying that one day God would bring your baby back to you. Maybe you are waiting for acceptance from your stepchild, your adopted child, or foster child. Maybe a child that you are mentoring and you are asking God every day for the Lord to soften their hearts and open them up to trust you. Maybe you're waiting for a big life change to happen and you are right at the cusp of it with a move or a new job, a new chapter in life. I know that was our case this time last year. The truth is, God is always working in the waiting, always. Waiting is not a passive term in scripture and in faith. And God has a plan of always creating scenarios and situations that will allow us to fulfill our destiny and our call. And it will look different for all of us. I believe that in that waiting, as much as we hate it, God is intentionally using that time to build us up and giving us the tools to grow in character. With Sarah, every decade seemed harder and harder, and it wasn't easy, and there were plenty of failures and mess-ups, but God was faithful, and we know that through it all, Sarah had faith. I want to share a story with you of one of my favorite saints, that lived at the turn of the 19th century. Her name is Amy Carmichael. And my prayer is that you would be inspired by her, a unlikely mother this Mother's Day. Amy was born in Ireland in 1867, and as a young woman, she ministered to the poor working in the textile mills of Belfast. One day, she heard the famous missionary Hudson Taylor talk about the great need for missionaries in Asia. And so Amy decided she would concede the hope and dream of ever getting married and ever being a mom. And she would step out in faith and serve Christ overseas. Amy dealt with all kinds of failures and disappointments lots of delays, but she finally landed on the shores of India in 1895. She had decided that she would focus her whole life as an itinerant evangelist to share the good news of the gospel, but she loved children. 
And so even with her maternal heart, she said, God is calling me to this particular thing, and following Jesus means sacrifice. One day, on a trip to a small village to preach in 1901, Amy met a seven-year-old girl named Prina who had been sold into prostitution. This little girl climbed into Amy's lap and called her Ama, which is Tamil for mother. And it was then that Amy's heart broke for this little girl, and she knew that even though she didn't know it, God had made her a mother in that moment. Amy thought that she would never have her own biological children, and she never did. She never married. But God used her powerfully. And within three months after meeting Prina, four more homeless children found their way into Amy's bungalow. She founded an orphanage in Dunavar, where all the unwanted and endangered children in India could come and have a safe place to be loved. Dozens of little girls were rescued from prostitution and hundreds of children were rescued from extreme poverty and neglect because of her seeing what God was doing in and around her, changing the itinerary for her life a little, stepping out in faith and action, and being patient. The orphanage is still active a hundred years later today, and her faith as an unlikely mother, a spiritual mother, and a guide to so many continues to inspire Christians all over the world. And this is one of my favorite quotes from Amy Carmichael. It is great to be faced with the impossible, for nothing is impossible if one is meant to do it. Wisdom will be given and strength will be given too. For where the Lord leads, the Lord will strengthen. So just like our ancestors of faith, Sarah and Amy, we serve a God who makes the impossible possible. A God who strengthens us for our journeys ahead. So for all of you waiting on something right now, know that God is for you. God loves you. And that even though things might not have worked out the way you hoped them to, even though you feel like maybe you missed your chance or you screwed up big time like I have, know that God will continue to work on your behalf, faithfully fulfilling the promises. There is no season of life that God wastes and no promise too great for the Lord to deliver. So my prayer for all of us this morning as we go out is to give ourselves grace during this time in a global pandemic where our faith is being tested and it is hard to wait patiently. We are waiting for things to get better. We are waiting for a cure. We are waiting to be able to go back and resume doing the things that we love. And that makes sense. Patience is a virtue for a reason because it is difficult for humans. So give yourselves grace. And remember that God is constantly working, preparing and transforming us through the trials that we endure. Nothing is too impossible with God. And at this time of the service, we want to honor all the women in our lives that have loved us and nurtured us. My dear friend and living saint, Amy Young, who is also a former missionary, has written a litany for Mother's Day that some of the pastors are going to recite with the photo slideshow of all of the pictures you submitted to us this week. It is so important to recognize the wide spectrum of motherhood and all the ways that we see, value, and stand with the women in our community. Enjoy. To those who gave birth to their first child this year, we celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. 
to those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains and spit up, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or estrangement, we mourn with you. To those who walk with the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster mamas and mentor moms and spiritual moms, we thank you and we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you in your pain. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience and pray for God's healing. To those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step parent, we walk with you on these complex paths and celebrate your faithfulness. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we enter into that bitter street chapter with you. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we joyfully anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real heroines in our midst. Thanks to all the women in our lives who have loved us and nurtured us. All right, I don't know about you, but uh, between that beautiful message shared with, by Pastor Angie and all of those beautiful pictures, I'm crying. I think the understanding of how our mothers, our birth mothers, our adoptive mothers, but all of those women in our lives who nurture us and help raise us, um, just touches me to the depth of my soul. What a gift that is. And I love that scripture describes our God in terms of both mother and father, our perfect heavenly parent who cares for our needs. And so today as we share the gift of Holy Communion, we're going to read a liturgy that was written by Pastor Kate Wallace Nunley. 
And it really looks at this idea of how what Christ does for us is so much like what a mother would do for us. And so I hope you've got your elements ready and I invite you now to share together in this sacred meal. Jesus says, this is my body broken for you and this is my blood shed for you. And all of it is to bring about new life. How similar to what a mother can say to the baby she just birthed. For a mother's body too is broken and her blood is shed to make way for new life. As we ponder this, let us remember the sacrifice Jesus made and make our humble confession before God. Cradling God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear these words of absolution. God is our loving parent who extends forgiveness to all those who ask for it and like a mother hen gathering her chicks draws the weary and the loss to the abundant table of life. Thanks be to God. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and after giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat this, all of you, and every time you do it, remember me. Likewise, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, gave thanks to God and said, take and drink this. This cup is the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this and remember me. Let us pray. Loving God, like a mother, you brought all things into being through trial and truth-telling, touch and tenderness. You nurture your people and lead us in the ways of justice and peace. Send your Holy Spirit upon the bread and the cup that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be the body of Christ incarnate in this world, redeemed by Christ. Amen. I invite you now to take your bread and your juice and remember the love of our heavenly parent. Amen. All right, it is that time for us to share our tithes and our offerings. And uh, if you've got something that you can send to your church, either through check or online, um, every dollar is supporting the good work our churches continue to do in this season. And uh, if this isn't a week that you can send something in monetarily, we know that we all have things to offer to God. And so take this time to pray and think and um, hear what God is calling you to offer. Let us share now our morning tithes and offerings. If you'd love, like to give to Shiloh United Methodist Church, go to shilohbillings.church forward slash give. Text an amount to 406-382-3185. Send checks to 1810 Shiloh Road, Billings, Montana, 59106. If you'd like to give to Hope United Methodist Church, Go to HopeUMCBillings.org and click Donation. Send checks to Hope United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 50066, Billings, Montana, 59105-0066. I'd like to give to Grace United Methodist Church. Go to GraceUMCBillings.org forward slash give. Text an amount to 406-660-3699. 
or send checks to 1935 Avenue B, Billings, Montana, 59102. If you'd like to give to Evangelical United Methodist Church, we invite you to go online at actyourfaith.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. Text an amount to 406-306-1231 or send checks to 345 Broadwater Avenue, Billings, Montana, 59101. If you'd like to give to First United Methodist Church, go to billingsfirst.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. Text an amount to 406-412-2402 or send checks to 2800 4th Avenue North, Billings, Montana, 59101. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. This is the time that we share joys and concerns this morning. If you have joys or concerns that you'd like to share with us, you can leave them in the chat or you can um, text them to us as well. We have a few uh, joys and concerns that were um, given to us this morning um, to, for people to keep in our prayers. Um, we pray for Steve Newstrom, who's having surgery, for Lenore Kipp, who has had a second TIA. Um, prayers of thanks for everyone who helped with the Shiloh and Hope food drives. Prayers for Jean Youngbauer, whose mother passed away uh, this week. Prayers of healing for every, Everett Strader, who was recently hospitalized for pneumonia. Prayers of healing for Nancy Oaks's father in Texas, who is in the hospital. And prayers also for the Walters family in Ritchie, Montana, who are grieving uh, the loss of a loved one. Prayers also for the family of Jim Leland, who passed away this week. And prayers for the family of Sandy Hawk, who passed away this week as well. This uh, Sunday, we celebrate Mother's Day, but uh, we also recognize this week the, um, the recognition on Tuesday of Missing and Murdered Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, in Yellowstone, uh, Bighorn, and Rosebud counties, um, there have been over 60 people who have been missing and murdered in our communities um, this year. And so um, today, and this week, we hold their families close, their communities close, and um, we continue to pray for justice for them. Would you be in prayer with me this morning? Spirit of life and love, we gather in different ways today. We gather some of us listening in our cars or on our TVs or on our computers or our phones. We gather knowing that your love and our love reaches across wires and waves and into our hearts and our lives. And so we pray that you would gather us together in spirit today and we bring our prayers before you for the ones we know and love, for Steve, for Lenore, for Alice, for Jean, for Everett, for Nancy and for her father, 
for the Waters family, for Jim's family, for Sandra's family. We bring to you our prayers for those who care for us in this crisis. We place them in your care, the doctors and the nurses, the health care workers, the frontline workers. We pray that you would give them courage of heart and strength of mind and body, that they would know our gratitude for all that they do to heal us and to provide for us. On this week, God, when we remember the missing and murdered indigenous people in our communities, we pray for their families and their communities. As we say their names before you, O God, we recognize their lives and their worth, and we mourn with those who love them. Christy Woodenthai, Allison Highwolf, Jordan Antoine Blacksmith, Freeman Benz, Casera Stops Pretty Places, Selena Not Afraid, Roiland Rides Horse Bright Wings, Rosella Wooden Thigh, Bonnie Three Irons, Penny Scott, Frida Nosegun, Hannah Harris, Tony Fisher, Diana Medicine Horse Rondeau, Shakaya Harding, Vivica Blacksmith, Jordan Brightwings, James Limberhand, Julian Paul Runs Above, Evander Rusty White Dirt, Levi Brian Yellow Mule. We pray also, God, for the family of Amon, Ahmad Arbery and for all who wait on justice delayed and denied. God, we pray that you would turn our mourning into recognition and action. Open our eyes to the pain of those that too often goes unnoticed. Give us courage to look honestly at our own roles in systems of injustice and spur us to use our voices and our privilege to live our faith by working for justice. God, you give us our daily bread. Grant us what we need to live lives of faith you call us to, to live lives of faith our families and churches and communities need, lives that with you birth your kingdom of wholeness, healing, mercy, and justice into this world. All this we pray through the Christ who saves us, who calls us, who taught us to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I hope this morning has been one of worship and hope for you. Thank you for joining us for our special Mother's Day celebration. Next week will also be a celebration as we honor the people graduating this year. It's going to be a different graduation for them, but we wanted to make sure that they knew their churches were with them. And the service will be led by our youth. I hope you can join us for that time, too. And now, it isn't going forth, is it? You're where you're going to be. But as you are there in your homes, know joy. For it is in a joyful life we live. And we live in joy because God loves us. Jesus lived, died, and rose for us. And the Holy Spirit strengthens and guides us now and forevermore. Amen. Sent out in Jesus' name.